There's definitely been some tough 24, 48, 72 hours here. Um, you know, just just kind of letting it all seep in and and just realizing that, you know, your brother is is, is no longer here with you no more. You know, he's uh he's off to something something better. So it's uh it's tough. It's a tough pill to swallow, you know. Um, you know, I never get into the game of, of playing GM, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely a tough situation because John is my brother, you know, and, and our relationship goes far beyond basketball, you know, and I think that's what's so tough about it, you know, is, is you know, we've developed a bond since I was in high school, and, you know, we've, we've had great years together, eight, nine years together here in D.C., and, uh, it's, it was it was definitely kind of shocking and crazy to see see the news the other day, but you understand as you said the first thing you said is you know this is a business you know it's the business of basketball and and uh, you know Shep Shep is the GM and he has to make these tough decisions and, uh, and this is probably definitely one of the toughest ones you know our organization has ever had to make you know and it was a tough pill for me to swallow too you know but on the on the flip side of it you know you look at it and see who we're bringing in and you see the caliber player on Russ. And what he's able to do, a former MVP, triple double, walking triple double, you know, and you know he's he's going to bring a spark to our team, you know, and, and the energy to our city. I think, you know, that that void won't go unfilled. You know, John left a, a tremendous tremendous impact on the city of DC. He left a tremendous impact on me and my family. Um, you know, our brother here, our brotherhood continues. You know, I've, I've had conversations with John over the last few days, you know, and uh, they've been nothing but positivity and they've been nothing but great conversations. And, you know, my ultimate goal for him is to be happy, you know, and, you know, but today was the first day of camp. And so we, I kind of have to shift my focus to to the Wizards and, you know, bringing Russ in and welcoming him and making him feel comfortable and, uh, you know, hitting this thing off running. Just one follow up on yesterday, John came to the facility for the last time to say his goodbyes. Uh, without really getting into the specifics out of respect of the relationship, though, but can you describe that last kind of goodbye and then Hong Kim kind of like walking away? I'm trying, I'm trying not to get emotional now, but it was tough, man, because he's a brother, you know, and you realize that relationship was so, so strong, but it was so crazy because a lot of people tried to break us apart. A lot of people tried to put us apart put us against each other. And it was just always crazy because when we came together and had those conversations, it was the total opposite of what everybody was making, the rumors and the noise. It was the total opposite. So, uh, you know, that's, like I said, man, that's a brotherhood that'll never be, that'll never be thrown away. You know, uh, our relationship continues. Uh, but, you know, that, that last conversation was, it spoke volumes, but I think it definitely spoke volumes for him to just come back, you know, uh, for him to be able to just come back to the facility, uh, you know, and, is, I'm not sure if he was hurt or if he was happy, but it was just it just spoke volumes of who John is as a person, you know, for him to come back and say his goodbyes to everybody. Not that not I haven't seen any not many players do that ever. Brad. Hey Brad, how you been, man? Brad, I'm good. How you doing, man? I'm good. Um looking forward. Um I'm I'm wondering, I mean Russell notoriously does not mingle with guys, good players who play for other teams. Uh, how well do you know him on a personal level? And I'm hoping to get your opinion on what you think the on-court dynamic is going to look like with the two of you, like the specific basketballiness of it. What, what do you think is going to work? What do you think you have to work on? That kind of stuff. Well, Russ is a, Russ is a pro. He's a, he's a, I mean, he's one of the best point guards in the game, you know, and for me to sit here and say, you know, he can't make things work with other guys. Well, I can sit here and say I'm not other guys either. You know, uh, their games aren't like my game. You know, I'm very adaptable. You know, I adjust to who's with me, uh, who I'm playing with, new guys we add, you know, and my job is to make his job easier, you know, uh, you know, but hopefully he comes in and he's able to pick up the playbook quick, but, you know, things are flying with this short, little short, little exhibition preseason we have, but, you know, we, we, I don't think it'll be a problem. You know, I, I'm hoping that he comes in with the energy and the focus that he always plays with. We just need him to continue to play with that drive, play with that leadership, and play like MVP like he's been playing, man, because we have a lot of young, talented guys who are hungry to win, who are hungry to get better, you know, and I think just Russ's energy and that 
just his his approach and his mental approach to the game will be perfect for us, you know. And uh, I'll feed off it too, you know. I think I have a lot to learn from him. He's uh, he's a lot older than me. Uh, he's an MVP. He's been there nine time All NBA. You know, so everything is there. You know, it's just a matter of us putting the pieces together. You know, I'm never going to judge a book by his cover until you know I I dive into actually playing with him. So, you know, I love his aggression. I love his his attack mentality, and uh, I just can't wait. And, and one quick follow-up to that. I know I know you guys as an organization, and you specifically as well, because you've spoken about it, talked a lot about kind of how you and and John could kind of make uh, the offense work this year and take the principles you did this year and put them into next year's offense with him there. Russell and John obviously kind of have a lot of overlapping basketball traits stylistically. Do you think that that some of those things that you've talked about, can can those apply to the same situation now with Russell entering? 100%. I mean, you look at them, they're they very, two very dynamic point guards. You know, they're very strong built, 6'4", 210, 215 probably. Like, they're strong guys. You know, they're – and on top of that, they're very explosive. They love the mid-range jumpers. Um, you know, they love to attack and get their teammates involved. So – they have a lot of similarities, you know, and so it's. It, I'm definitely curious to see uh, the adjustment I make with playing with Russ. Uh, I will say I know him off the court a little bit, and I am a I am a fan of his. He's a family man. He's a great guy, great character guy. Uh, so I, I believe we'll we'll mesh well and Jill will. You know, I'm excited to have him here. Uh, but I think I think on the court we'll be good, man. I'm like I said before, I'm adaptable, very easy to play with. So uh, I don't think it'll be a problem at all. Ava. Hey, Brad, I uh, hope you're well. Um, something Scott Brooks said a lot this morning is that he actually sees a lot of similarities between you and Russ. And I'm wondering just from what you know about how he goes about approaching the game and, and preparation or even anything on court, um, do you see those similarities that he's talking about? Yeah, uh, just from watching afar, like, and just being on his team at All-Star and just watching his preparation for games and things like that, like, he's, he's locked in, you know, and I, I like to have that same approach and drive. You know, he always wants to get better. He wants to be the leader. He wants to be the best player on the floor. You know, he wants to play with energy. You know, he wants to be the example, you know, for the rest of the team. You know, and I feel like that's that's the same mindset I've been having over the last few years as, as a leader, you know, trying to step up in big moments, trying to lead the team as best as I can. You know, now here we have a guy who's who's been, been to the finals, been to the Western Conference finals numerous times, you know, has been in the playoffs. So, you know, he knows what it takes you know, to kind of get us over the hump. So, you know, we're looking for his leadership, you know, to come in right away and, uh, and help us out. Have you been thinking about that all-star experience lately? Just remembering what that was like for you playing with him and everything? Uh, briefly, because it was, I think that game was maybe two years ago, I think, mm -hmm. like, but, uh, briefly, briefly, briefly. I'm ready for this year. VA? Bradley, how you doing, sir? Doing well, how are you? I'm all right, I'm all right. Hey, um, the old adage is styles make fights. Um, piggybacking a little bit off of Fred's question, um, what do you think are the areas in which you and Russ are naturally compatible in terms of how you play? And in what ways do you think each of you will have to sacrifice something to make the other player the best they can be? Well, I would say we, I mean, he's a true point and I'm a true two, you know, so I would feel like that, that in itself is, you know, it makes us mesh. You know, he loves to pass first. Uh, everybody always has this mindset that Russ is super aggressive, but I love aggression. You know, I love attack mentality. I love guys getting downhill. I love guys who incorporate their teammates. Like, I feel like my conversations I've had with people like Russ is a great teammate. Russ is a great person. You know, I think it's a lot of false narratives that people have on him. Um, you know, so I won't, I won't, I won't have any of, I won't put any stock into those things until, you know, I, I actually, you know, get some time with Russ on the floor. Um, but I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll be anything where he comes in and he's like trying to, you know, run the show and just do everything by himself. You know, he realizes that it's a, it's a group effort and, you know, I'm here, Rui's here, TB's here, we just re-signed Davies. So we have a great group of guys here who we can make things work, you know, and we put, it's a well put together team. So, uh, you know, we gotta, we just gotta hit the ball running, you know, from day one, but I don't think it'll be any issues. Um, I think just the fact that I love to play on the ball a little bit more than in, you know, years past, maybe the only thing, but, you know, just seeing them being able to 
defer to PG, defer to KD, defer to James at times, like that's, you know, that's going to be the same thing. Either. And a, a follow up on a completely different topic. Now that the season has started for everybody, um, everybody's not in one place like you all were in Orlando during the bubble. I know you weren't there, but the team was there during the bubble. How do you think guys are going to continue to kind of amplify that social justice message now that everybody's kind of scattered in different places in your respective cities? I think it'll keep going. You know, I think uh, the pressure won't stop. Uh, it'll more or less kind of be up to teams and their individual markets to kind of figure out what they want to do. Um, I know we'll definitely, we'll, we'll definitely continue to push that envelope. Um, but, you know, the work isn't done. You know, our first step was, was voting, you know, getting people out to register, you know, getting people out to the polls, and we accomplished that. But, you know, now it's on to the next, you know, the next issue in society, you know, addressing, you know, the systemic racism we still have, addressing the police brutality, um, you know, addressing all of these things in which we still deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, the financial curve that, you know, needs to be, you know, that gap needs to be shrunk. So it's a lot of things that we need to dive into as a society. And I think us as a PA, as a league, you know, we're going to continue to push those, those narratives regardless if people say the ratings are down. You know, we don't really care about that. We're going to continue to push the narratives. Ava? Yeah, Brad, it's been a long time since you were able to take the court with the team. How was first practice today? How was the energy? And how is your body feeling with the shoulder and everything? I was like, I got to get some wind. I got I to get some wind back. <laughs> I got I to gotta get some wind back. But it was, it just felt great to be back on the floor. Uh, like I said before, it's been an emotional week. So, you know, just to be a, be back in your your great space of peace, you know, your happy place was was really good. You know, we had a great day today. Um, everybody was, a, you know, attentive uh, and, you know, locked in from the start, you know, very attentive to detail um, from coaches' voice to players, you know, me trying to help guys with plays. It's been, it's been a really good day. I think for the first time we had, I think we ran our offense in the beginning and all of our teams, even, you know, new guys who've never been here were able to run our plays, you know, crisp without making mistakes. So that's probably the first time we've had that in a long time. So. You know, I think just our focus and our energy was great today. We've got to keep it going, though. And other than getting your wind back, body's feeling good, shoulder's feeling good? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for asking. Uh, shoulder feels great. Uh, the rehab all summer was awesome. Uh, definitely got to credit our team here with the Wizards. Uh, they're staying on my tail every day, making sure I, I, I get the rehab in. Uh, I feel awesome today. Uh, my body feels great. My legs feel great. There's no problem. So I'm ready to hit the ball rolling. Cool. Thanks, Brad. Yeah. Olivia. Hey, Brad, how's it going? Doing well, how are you? Good, good. Um, coach joked this morning that uh, Westbrook does not like other guards in the league. Uh, how much did you feel that heat um, when you were playing against him or when you did? And how happy are you, on, how happy are you to be on his side? Yeah, I'm on his side, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's funny because he has that mentality, and I think that's what I love. You know, he has, you no, know, there's no friends. There's no friends out here. You know, once he stepped in between those four lines, regardless if he played with you for 10 years, a half a year, you know, regardless, you know, if he, if you're on the opposite team, you know, he is attacking you, he's going at you, he's smack talking. And, you know, I love it. So, you know, I'm definitely happy that I'm on this side of it. Uh, I was on the other side a few times. It didn't get crazy. But, you know, he rushed trash talks with the best of them, though. He's very confident. He's very, very passionate about the game, man. So you have to respect it. And, uh, and he goes out there and gets the job done. So, you know, you have to do nothing but tip your hat to him. Uh, not sure who is there, but I see NBA on TNT with a hand raised, so. Hey, yes. Um, hey, Bradley, this is Kyle Wells with uh, Turner Sports. Um, so my question is about kind of you know, the pandemic has changed how we watch sports and everything, basketball, how it's experienced. Obviously, you've been playing this game for a long time now. What is it about the game that just keeps you engaged and energized and motivated? And then at the same time, what is it about the game that brings fans back to want them to see the game, to be a part of their, their lives? Well, I think the pandemic in itself is kind of just, just creates that vibe of just wanting to get back and doing things, you know, because we're, we're sheltered, you know, we aren't necessarily allowed to mingle, go out, you know, we have to social distance to the best of our abilities. And, uh, you know, so I think it, it kind of creates that vibe of anxiety of like, yeah, well, I got to get back on the court, you know, we got to watch sports, we got to get back. So uh, I think it was just a matter of time. Uh, it's just, it's definitely crazy 
and it's an adjustment every single day. We have to get tested. You got to go through protocols. Um, but you know, it's what's best for us. It's what's best for society. It's what's best for the world. Um, but it is, it is a crazy time we're living in. We just gotta, we just gotta deal with it, you know, um, take it in full stride and just wish for the best. Jason. Hey, what's up, Brad? Good to see you, man. How are you? Uh, you uh, you've talked about how uh, you want to win and you want this organization to give you an opportunity to do that. What does it say about their commitment to building a contender to do what this move is, which is a huge move to get Russell Westbrook? For sure. I mean, I mean, Shep knows. Shep runs the team. Just as well as I want to win, I know he wants to too. I know Ted wants to. I know Coach Brooks does. You know everybody does. So it's just, it was, it was a tough move, but you know it was, it was made. You know it's the business of basketball. We got to take it and run with it. And you know we got an MVP caliber guy coming back. You know who can really, who can really help our team. You know so, I'm excited about it. You know our biggest step is you know to set our goals in the pre. I mean the preseason. Let's get better every day and, you know, let's make our playoff run. You know, that's the ultimate thing. The East has gotten tremendously better. So for us to sit here and say it'll be easy, is, is, you know, that would be naive of me to say, you know, so it won't be easy. We won't be a cakewalk. We got to put in the work every single day. Um, but getting Russ was a great addition. Getting DB back was awesome. Uh, you know, we still got TV. Getting Robin, you know, all the additions that we add, you know, I think could really help us out. And um, what do you think it's going to be like going up against John? for the first time in an actual NBA game? I don't know, man. I honestly don't know because my whole career, all I know is John. So, you know, this would definitely be, like today was definitely, definitely weird. So um, it'll be, it'll be different. You know, it'll be competitive. I know for sure, you know, he'll probably be trying to give us 60, but you know, we're going to do everything in our power to keep that from happening. But, you know, it'll be, it'll be love. You know, I'm sure it'll be emotional on both sides, um, but, you know, he's a competitor. You know, he's he's going to come out and compete with the best of them. You know, he's going to treat it like going against me at practice. So it won't be too different. Matt. Hey, Brad. Uh, nice to see you. Just kind of following up on that. I mean, did you need to see a move like this as tough as it was? Like, did you need to kind of see that commitment to win from Tommy? Or how does it I mean, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said before, I don't get into the, the GM game. I don't pick and choose who comes, who's, who goes um, at all. Um, so it's, it's definitely tough to see that, you know, you want to be put in a position to where you, you're able to win, you know, and, you know, the organization felt like this was the move. So you got to take it and run with it, you know. Uh, you can't harp on it as hurtful as it may be, or, you know, it's, you got you to gotta take it and run with it. You know, it's a business, it's a game that we love to play. And, uh, you know, relationships never, never end, you know, those continue to go. So uh, my bond with John, uh, it continues, you know, our brotherhood continues, you know, so it's definitely tough, but, you know, we, 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 we take it in stride now. And then what is you, what do you think it does for your guys' ceiling for this season? And, you know, uh, Tommy mentioned a little bit earlier that maybe you guys before would have had to nurse John along or just kind of incorporate him slowly, but Russ maybe helps you get off to a faster start. Do you, do you agree with that? Uh, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, because I remember Chef came out and, and they want to be real cautious with John coming back off the injury, which is, I mean, you understand that. Um, but it's, it's definitely great to be able to have Russ come in and uh, and, and give us that, you know, 100,000%, you know, effort every single night, you know. Um, and our job is to protect him and making sure that, you know, he's comfortable, making sure he knows the system, making sure that, you know, he feel he fits well with us, you know, so we want to make him feel feel comfortable here. You know, so uh, that's my job and it's everybody else's job too, you know. So I'm excited. I'm thrilled to have him. Uh, like I said before, it's definitely been an emotional week, but you look at the positives of it and uh, you know, we have an awesome player coming back in return. So thanks. Quinn. How you doing, Brad? Mayo. To work. So um, I we talked to Scott Brooks and he just went on and on about how good your body looks and how you you came into camp in shape and he was just so impressed with that. So I kind of want to ask about your off season. I've seen the different types of workouts you do in that room. Uh, kind of tell us what you've been focused on this off season in terms of your preparation for another crazy year. 
Oh man, it's, I usually have the same approach every year, and my biggest thing is if if I'm on the floor, then I'm good. You know, my biggest thing is making sure that I'm available for my teammates in this organization. You know, being able to play on a nightly basis. So, um, you know, staying on my daily routine, staying on my corrective exercises. You know, I dedicated myself more to getting in the weight room and doing lifts that are more strength and power dominant. You know, getting some more explosion. You know, getting some more. Um, strength and muscle uh, in my legs to be able to, you know, endure this long season, endure these long minutes, enduring all the jumping and up and down and the running. You know, all that takes a toll on your joints and your muscles. So, you know, I just try to stay on my routine, stay on my body, um, you know, strengthen my hips, legs, calves, everything, every single part of my body. And then obviously making sure that my shoulder was strong enough to um, coming into camp. So I didn't want to have any setbacks and I don't want to have, you know, restrictions or anything, you know, heading into this thing. And also looking forward, Washington selected Denny Abdia. Uh, how do you, what do you take away from his game from what you've seen so far and also playing with him? Uh, what did you like about that pick and how do you imagine he'll be implemented into this offense and defense moving forward? He has a lot of dog. That's one thing I would say out the rip. Like he has a lot of dog. He doesn't back down from anybody, you know, and he has great size. He's a lot bigger than I think people give him credit for. You know, he might even be six nine, six close to 16. So he has a lot of great size, uh, can shoot it very well. It's nice form, nice touch. You know, uh, it's just a matter of just getting them at a better field of the game at three, at four, you know, mixing them up. Um, so I think once he gets fully acclimated, you know, it'll be just like Rui, you know, just Rui's growth is, is crazy to see now, you know, from a year ago, you know, but even during his process, he got better along the way. You know, we expect the same thing from Jenny, but I think we'll definitely throw him into the fire early on. And see what he can do. Appreciate you, B. Yeah. Fred. Yeah, Brad, I just wanted to follow up on on something from earlier where I know you're gonna say that you've said talked about this a million times before, but we haven't mm -hmm. spoken to you in seven or eight months. And obviously a lot has changed, especially in the last 48 hours. So I'm wondering, you have reasserted time and time again that you want to stay in DC. Does does making a move like this have any effect on those desires in either direction? I honestly I haven't even thought about that. For real. I I haven't. I haven't. Um, and my biggest thing is win now. You know, I want to win, and I'm here on the contract for this year, next year, um, and player option too. So it's just a matter of we got to win. You know, and, and the organization knows that it's up to me too. So I can't just sit here and just put all the eggs in their basket and look at a chef like he's crazy. You know, I have to go out and lead the team, put in the work and get better every day and uh, bring results. So uh, it's a full effort from everybody. You know, we just got to make sure we go out and win, whatever it looks like. Um, I haven't given thoughts or any thing about the future. You know, that's, that's a year from now. I mean, who knows, you know, so I'm just more or less focused on this year, how we can help Russ get acclimated and where we can go from here. Thank you, Brad. Yeah. Finish up with Chris Miller. Brad, last year before camp started, you kind of set a tone of your expectations of the young players. Obviously, this the record was the record. But what you saw in the bubble from those young guys, how much was their carryover, you think, from the summer and improving and what you saw kind of just in day one today? A lot. A whole lot. Just in terms of our intensity and our energy and our focus, you know, just seeing the way that the guys competed in the bubble, finished hard. It's like we carried that over right into camp. You know, the guys are locked in, defending. You know, we couldn't do too much crazy contact, but it was it was beneficial. You know, we got great quality work in. You know, guys were talking, communicating, active. Um, just, it was just a great environment, great energy on day one. You know, and that's what you need to be able to set the tone for the rest of the year. Uh, so I'm definitely excited about the group. Um, it was in all my years past, it was definitely one of the more like crisp, crisp day ones we've had. So, uh, you know, that's definitely a good sign in, in the right direction. Sorry, we do actually have one more question. Glenn Consor has not figured out how to use the raise hand feature on, G -Money. Uh, on Zoom on Zoom yet. So we'll uh, let him ask. Whenever you're ready, G, we're waiting on you. What up, B? G Money. B, I remember talking to you years ago when Paul Pierce was here. Uh, someone of that magnitude that has come to the team for a year. And I remember you telling me about leadership and, and what he provided 
to this team. Uh, two questions regarding him and, and how you are now and what you've learned from him and what you think you could learn from Russ. What I loved about Paul, I, I would say they're very similar. From, I think they asked the question is earlier, just Russ's mindset of being on his team versus being against him. So when you're his teammate, you're his teammate. It's the same with Paul Pierce, right? He loves you to death. But once you're against him, it's, all bets are off. Like he act like you a bum on the street. He don't know you. So that's, that's that's kind of that's kind of the mentality he has when he comes on the court. You know, is he's like very he's gonna disrespect you and he's gonna attack you, you know, and on on the flip side of that, like he's a awesome, loving, you know, caring guy, you know, and I feel like that's how Russ is. Russ is an awesome dude, you know, he's a family man. Um it's it's just I'm excited to be around him. You know, I've, I was around him briefly, you know, just from All-Star being around him in the summer a few times and just seeing him. But, um, you know, to be his teammate now, I'm excited about it. You know, I think I can learn. I think I can learn a lot from him. And I'm, I'm definitely an active learner. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not the oracle. I don't know everything. And I don't try to act like I know everything. You know, so I sit here and I have an open mind, open heart, and I try to listen and figure out ways in which I can get better. This guy won MVP, you know, so how can I put myself in that category to get better, you know, to put myself in that type of conversation and, you know, help propel my team to wins, you know, because that's what's the, you know, the most important factor, you know, but I think just the biggest thing I take from Paul Pierce was just his dedication to his team, you know, his dedication to his craft every single day he worked on it, you know, his first one in last one to leave. And, you know, he kept that mindset in year 15, 16, however long he played, you know, and it was, it was awesome to be able to witness that, you know, witness a Hall of Famer put in work the way he did. And, uh, you know, now I have another, a chance to play with another one and, you know, be able to learn from him as well. Yep, another Hall of Famer, V. 100%.